Hi guys, welcome back to Dental Vibes. I'm Carla, and in today's video, Gabby's gonna review with us how to make a basic anterior temporary crown. So we hope that you find this video informative and helpful. And we also like to thank Dr. Angulo at Thornton Park Dental Arts for sponsoring our video. All right guys, so the first thing that you need to do for your temporary is take an impression of the teeth. So for you to make an interior temporary, you wanna make sure that it is most perfect, natural, and beautiful as possible, obviously for your patient to walk out with a happy face and a beautiful smile. So I have the motto here on what the patient looked like before. We were replacing a crown, so her teeth did not look broken or, you know, not too bad. So it's not gonna be the case with every patient. If you have a patient that came in, for example, with a chipped tooth broken in half, sometimes patients have fractions on the neck of the teeth, any pretty much um, little irregularity like that, you wanna make sure you correct it before you take your impression. So what I suggest to use is, you know, you can keep just some, some expired flowable um, to do this, or if you don't have any and you don't wanna use up your composite, you can save up whenever you do zoom whitenings, you can save up the liquidem and it will help you as well. So for example, let's say this tooth was chipped on the incisal. You would go ahead and add flow wherever it's chipped to make the tooth looks pretty and cure it. And you take your impression like that because it's gonna save you a lot of time later on when you're shaping your, your temporary, okay? So that's the first part. Very, very important. And it's a, a really nice trick that I learned um, that it's gonna just save you so much time. So after you make sure that your patient's tooth looks good, um, you're gonna go ahead and take the impression. I use here an interior quadrant tray. So I use some alginate, put it inside the tray, put it inside the patient's mouth, take the impression. After that, you're ready to make your temporary. All right, so you're ready to just make your temporary. So of course, we don't have a patient here, so we are using the model that we got from the lab. So this is what the tooth would look like if it was prepped, okay? So, wow, the tooth is coming out. So we're gonna use that to make our temporary, but of course, if you had a patient, you would just do it directly in a patient's mouth. All right, so now you're ready to make your temporary. A few tips I will give you. So, um, on the prep, if you are scared that your temporary is gonna lock, you can use either Vaseline or I like to use topical um, because topical is easier to clean than Vaseline. So you get a, a little bit of topical on a micro brush and you put it on your prep. I feel like this is a little too much. You put it on your prep like this. Also on the adjacent teeth. So another thing, if you notice that the adjacent teeth have some irregularities, for example, if this tooth here has an abfraction like right here, or it has an abfraction right here, then that means your temporary probably will lock right there. So either you can try uh, using the Vaseline or the topical. I personally would go ahead and fill in those voids. So all those little um, details, you want to make sure you take a look at it before you do your temporary so it's easier for you to just remove it, shape it, no problem. I'm ready to do my temporary. You're going to make sure you choose the right tooth, of course. You're going to put a little bit of your material on your paper or your tray so you know when it's ready. You're going to go into your tooth and fill in. Make sure you don't fill it in too much. I mean, that should be enough. And put in and hold it in your patient's mouth. So you're gonna be holding it in, and this is going, whoo! Okay, this is gonna help you, let you know when it's ready. Some assistants like to know the setting time of every material. I just can't keep up with all that, so I just know when it's ready when I touch it. I can pick up my little temporary piece that means it's ready 
So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my temporary. So that's what it looks like. Sometimes it comes out on the impression, sometimes it stays stuck on a tooth. So ready to remove your temporary, you're gonna grab your hemostat and you're going to wiggle it off just like that. All right, so now we are ready to shape our temporary. So depending on the material, um, you know, if it's regular acrylic like we learn in school, you might have to use an acrylic burr. Um, but personally, um, I prefer the high speed just because it gives you a better finished look. Um, it's faster and I feel like I have more control. Um, so with this material, I can use the high speed no problem. So it really depends on how, you know, you're comfortable or, you know, the material you're using. So for um, the shaping, what I use, which is fast, is the diamond. I start with a diamond. So this is just a regular diamond for crown preps. And I start just removing all the extra stuff first. So you want to make sure that you have your fulcrum. So you don't want to just do this because you're going to trim things that you don't want to trim. So you want to make sure you have control. Grab the, the temporary in one hand. The other hand, you're going to pull from here. And then you have more control of what you're doing. Okay? So here, I'm going to remove from the margin first. You want to be very careful on the contact. You see all this extra stuff, I know you're going to want to go ahead and remove it, but then you create an open contact, so you can't do that. You want to make sure that you polish only, and then later on you can modify that. So here, very carefully, I'm just going like this. Not here, just on the facial part. So you see how I'm full firming here? So I can have control of what I'm doing. I'm gonna come on, now you see, we have a little bubble, okay? So what you're gonna do with this little bubble, you're gonna have to fill this in. You can't leave that like that, okay? So before I perfect my margin, I'm gonna fix this first, okay? And this happens a lot. Um, so I'm glad it actually happened here so I can show you guys. So you're going to put it back on the patient's mouth, okay, just like that. Then you're going to grab your flowable and you're going to fill that in. Can you see? Let's, yes. So you're going to fill it in where you have a void. Just like that. Same thing if you have a little chip, if you have an open contact, you don't want to um, let your patient leave with an open contact so they can get food jammed in there um, every time they eat something. So you would add composite to the contact until it's tight. And this part is kind of annoying if you're dealing with the contact because you have to add, try, subtract, add, try, subtract until you get the perfect um, contact. All right, so we added our little void, and you can see, now we got all this bulky stuff that we're gonna have to trim back. You can see right here that your margin is really clear, that you can read your margins, very important. So now, since I kinda got the bulk of the extra stuff out, I'm going to change my burr to more of a polishing burr, okay? So this is the flame to polish. And I'm going to go back. See how over here it's kind of all, you know, extra stuff. You want it to be smooth, just like a regular crown. So you want to come in here and kind of smooth everything off. Okay, so... That's what it's going to look like right now. Now, we are going to do the final touches. This is pretty much ready to go. 
Okay, so this is a step that usually I only do with interiors, okay, with molars or premolars, you don't have to, to do all this. But I like to use the discs to polish the interior temporary. So I'm gonna get my Mendro and I'm going to use my slow speed. Depending on how smooth your temporary is, sometimes it's already almost as smooth as it can be. So I will go ahead and just use like a rubber polisher and just go all over and polish just with this and I'm done. But on this one, I think I need to work a little bit more. So I have three discs here. This is coarse, middle, and this is a fine. So I'm gonna start with the black. And start polishing. Again, you see this? So you can have control of what you're doing. Please don't do this. Okay, just make sure you're consistent. So you see, I can put my finger all over and not feel any catch or bump. Now we're gonna go on the bottom, or I mean, on the lingual. Now you're gonna look at the margin and see if you need to trim down the margin because sometimes, especially if you have um, the tooth retracted with cord, then you might have um, the temporary made kind of over the margin. So you wanna make sure that your temporary is meeting the margin exactly, just like a regular crown should be. Now, I keep going down my discs. Last one. It's done, ready to go. You wanna try it on your patient. You wanna make sure that all the margins are closed, all the margins are, if it is open, let's say you're done with your temporary, you try it on, oh, you got a little piece that is open, okay? What you're gonna do, go back with your flowable, okay? Go ahead and fill in. Let's say it's open right here. You're gonna fill it in right there. Gonna make sure that, you know, it's close. Cure it, take it out, polish it again. Please make sure you don't leave any bit of the margin open. Next thing you're gonna check, contact. So, of course it's hard here because this is a model, but you wanna make sure that your contact has a snap. It does can be open. Third thing, you're going to check the bite. Okay, so patient bites down. Okay, grind from side to side. Make sure they are biting up and down, grinding side to side. Okay, then you're gonna see. Oh, it's high. Okay, it's high. Make sure you adjust the bite because the patient will knock it out if the bite is off, okay? So, I'm gonna use a football carbide polisher and I'm going to adjust the bite, just like that. Yeah, try again. Okay. A little bit. Now, you can see the adjacent teeth. If the patient hits the adjacent teeth on the incisal, that's okay. Okay, but you want to make sure that you clear the occlusion as much as possible so the patient is not biting on it. So then you can be confident and say, okay, my temporary is not going to come out while the patient waits for the permanent one. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust a little bit more. Gee. That's good. Okay, another thing you wanna make sure, it's your front tooth, okay guys? Let's think about this. What would you like your front tooth to look like, right? So is it looking like it belongs there, right? 
is the length matching the adjacent teeth, right? Is the bulkiness. You don't want this tooth to be flat and then you're temporary bulky. You want to make sure that is matching the next tooth, right? So in a model, it's hard to tell, but you know, seems pretty good. So the final step is to make sure it's shiny, okay? So what I like to use, either bond, uh, make sure that the bond you use is not like yellow, it's more like the clear one. Um, if you don't have bond, um, the Fortify is pretty good, which is kind of like a uh, glaze to put on top of composites and it's clear. So, put a tiny bit. Okay, so you get a little bit of glaze. Put it all over, air dry it, If you found our video helpful to improve your temporary making techniques, give us a like and let us know in the comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell and we'll see you next time. Just so you know, you will have temporary material from head to toe.